Member for West Vancouver, Capilano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, the Premier never lets the truth get in the way of a good story. Um, BC United has said that they will actually Remember? be providing, they will actually be supporting legislation that will help to regulate Airbnbs. What has we have said that and we supported that. What we have said is there are people here today in the gallery who are operating short-term rentals who are being unfairly targeted by this NDP's Bill 35. People like Suzanne, a senior from North Vancouver, uh, we need the income to survive. I can't believe that after 50 years of hard work, you're doing this to us in our retirement. You should be ashamed. I understand going after people with multiple properties, but punishing us for one extra property, unbelievable, unquote. BC United has proposed common sense amendments to rectify the NDP's half-baked legislation, which this NDP government has dismissed and voted against. So will the Premier listen to common sense and protect these legally operating tourist accommodations in communities like Parksville and Vernon and right across the province? Members, before I recognize the uh, government health leader, I just remind people, be careful in your wording when we ask the question and answer. House Leader. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Appreciate it. <laughs> Honourable Speaker, there seems to be a theme emerging. Uh, whenever we bring initiatives forward, first the BC United Caucus, they support the initiative. Then the BC Conservatives start talking about, against it. The MLA for Parksville starts speaking against it. And then all of a sudden they realize, oh my gosh, there's, a, there's an issue here that might be important for us. We might be able to get some votes, Honourable Speaker. Okay, this is the theme that's been over. So the member just said, we did support it. Oh, but until we heard from the other parties that this might not be a good idea, Honourable Speaker. There's no consistency in any position that they take. It changes all the time. It all depends, Honourable Speaker. Members, Honourable Speaker. one at a time, please. It all depends on two things, what the B.C. Conservatives say and then whoever's in the audience today, Honourable Speaker. <laughs> Honourable Speaker, we have been consistent. We will continue to prioritize housing available for people in our communities. We know there's people struggling for housing. We are doing every single thing we can to ensure housing is available for people in our communities. West Vancouver Capilano Supplemental. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. That is gobbledygook from the Minister of Housing and does not satisfy these people who are being hurt by this. After seven years of the NDP promising life would be more affordable, nothing could be further from the truth, as housing has never been less affordable. Instead of looking in the mirror, this Premier looks for scapegoats. He's even attacked people like Melissa a Vancouver renter who depends on income from a single short-term rental property to support her family, who says, quote, these are her words, quote, I have two small children, one and four years old, and thinking about our family's future makes me angry. You've completely uprooted our financial health and portrayed us as the bad guys, end quote. When will the Premier stop blaming middle-class families like Melissa's and call our common sense private members' bill for debate? Minister of Housing. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Um, the member said it's gobbledygook. It is not. They, in fact, supported... Members. Honourable Speaker, this is a consistent theme. They supported short-term rental legislation. The BC Conservatives came against it. Now they're against it. This is a this is a theme. This is a theme, Honourable Speaker. Surrey Police. Surrey Police. Members, members, members. It's okay to hear the answer. It's okay. Be quiet, also. Honourable Speaker, Please. similar with Surrey Police, similar with harm reduction, this is a theme we consistently see from the side. Honourable Speaker, people are struggling for housing in our community. We have communities with vacancy rates near 1%, can't attract health care workers, can't attract teachers, can't attract the important services we need in our communities. We need to move more housing into the long-term market. I certainly hope that people will take the opportunity to provide long-term housing opportunities for people in our communities.